Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NEM Motion Channel panel, the first of many, we hope. And today's topic is titled, We're Getting Sassy. My name is Graciela Pericone, and I'm the Channel Marketing Manager here at NEM Motion. And I'm joined by four members of our channel sales team, Mark, James, Shamitha, and Jason. Now let's get right into it. SASE, or Secure Access Service Edge, which is a term coined by Gardner back in 2019, has transitioned from a fairly obscure term to a philosophy dominating the conversation in 2021. Because of this, SASE has definitely caught the attention of professionals working across IT, network, and security landscapes as they prepare their post-pandemic strategies. And for those who don't know, NetMotion recently released our SASE report titled The Journey to the Cloud. In this report, we shared our findings from a research study we conducted where 750 professionals working across five geographical markets gave their responses to our various questions on where they stand on their journey to the cloud or SASE. And from that survey, it was found that 33% of IT leaders couldn't confidently describe what SASE is. So let's try to change that a little bit right now. So let's start this panel off with you, Shamitha. How would you describe SASE and why should our customers and our partners be interested and embrace this digital transformation to the cloud? Uh, thanks, Graciela. So SASE or Secure Access Service Edge is essentially a framework of network and security technologies that will help customers in their journey to cloud. Uh, and that's it's as simple as that. But why there's so uh, a lot of complications around it and, and uh, misconceptions is around there, there's a lot of technologies involved in it, uh, like SD-WAN, Cloud VPN, uh, experience monitoring tools, uh, Cloud Access Secure Brokers, uh, Zero Trust Network Access. So, so there's quite quite a few that make up the core of the SASE technology stack. But which ones you're going to use will really depend on where you're in within the cloud journey as well as the maturity of an organization. And it, it can even mean uh, it can be different depending on the vertical business segment that, that you're in. A legal might be different from financial services uh, and utilities might be different as well. Now, why should customers be interested? Well, one thing that I would say is that they need to be interested in these technologies because of the shift in where data resides and where it's consumed. So services and applications are moving to cloud. We know that from many, many of the surveys that we've done. Um, and they're being consumed outside of the traditional boundaries of the enterprise. So they're on, on devices that are outside the boundary. Um, this essentially causes a lack of visibility and security controls for, for IT. So what they can do using the SASE technologies is to improve their security posture, uh, but also provide that great user experience that end users are used to. Now, Another thing that I, I, I always think is that for our partners, they're really suited to support customers with this by building these solutions that will incorporate the best in breed uh, SASE technologies and making it and bringing it to market so that they're easily consumable as a service to end customers. So, so that's why uh, they, they need to embrace it. Partners need to embrace those technologies as well. And I would certainly say start with a couple of use cases or business units and grow the technology stack. So if I was a customer, that's how I would uh, approach it. Perfect. And I really like that point that you made of how SASE doesn't have such a rigid criteria and how it can be interchanged to match a company's need, And I, which is exactly why we named the SASE report the journey to the cloud, because every journey or every path can look completely different. And another great quote or finding that came from the report is that no vendor has a single complete integrated end-to-end -end solution based upon this architecture. And by this, we mean the full SASE technology stack that was mentioned, nor is any likely to deliver one over the next three years. So James, hearing this, and I got a three-parter for you, what do you think is driving SASE implementation? Are you seeing hesitation in adopting SASE? And what can organizations do now to start embracing it? Thanks, Graciela. Great questions. Um, first off, I suppose, uh, as I see it, ultimately, SASE implementation is being driven by a uh, change in working practices, coupled with this accelerated migration of services to the cloud. 
when employees worked exclusively from a PC located in an office, it made a lot of sense that your networking and security solutions would reside in a box locally. Uh, however, as working habits change and more users start to work from locations other than the office, this could be at home, uh, on, on the move, in a coffee shop, something the whole world has experienced extensively over the past 12 months, you soon reach a point at, where, where, at which it makes little sense to continue tunneling everything back through the enterprise. And, and the signs suggest that this is unlikely to change anytime soon. Uh, you know, we've heard over the last few months from, from global organizations, the likes of Unilever, Facebook, PwC, Lloyd's, even Salesforce, to name but a few, uh, all coming out suggesting that they're going to be adopting more permanent, flexible working practices moving forward. SASE is in effect an evolution of network security architecture that's far better suited to modern working practices, delivering all the necessary networking and security capabilities at the edge via the cloud at the point of consumption. Uh, add into the mix an accelerated adoption of cloud services, and it's easy to see why SASE represents a far more suitable architecture for a modern workforce. Once an organization decides to, you know, to embark on this, this journey to SASE uh, and fully embrace it, there's a host of other advantages to be gained. Uh, complexity is significantly reduced with, with fewer appliances to manage and agents to deploy. Uh, performance is greatly improved uh, with, with reduced latency. Um, security is enhanced and, and organizations can scale up and down almost on a whim. Uh, and policies managed centrally and enforced locally. So, so in summary, as I see it, the change in working practices and adoption of cloud services are ultimately the driving forces at play here. But organizations are quick to realize uh, there are a host of other significant advantages and benefits to be gained once the decision has been made to embrace SASE. Uh, to your second part of your question um, around hesitation in adopting SASE, Generally, I don't think there's necessarily hesitation in adopting SASE, but, but perhaps a lack of clear understanding. The reality is that many organizations have already started to, to adopt SASE, but perhaps unknowingly, with, uh, with the adoption of um, Cloud Secure Web Gateways, SD-WAN, ZTNA, for example. Um, there will, of course, be exceptions and, and certain industries that are perhaps more risk averse, uh, finance, for example, where where change will will inevitably take a little bit longer but no doubt over time they will they will get there as well um and to the last to the last part of your question um you know what what can we do to 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 help organizations you know start embracing embracing sassy first off this isn't something that's going to happen overnight um and to your to the quote uh, that, that that you mentioned um this isn't something that can be addressed by a single vendor quite simply it's not a product uh, equally, all organizations are different uh, and priorities are going to be different um, from one organization to, to another. There is no one size fits all approach for SASE. Uh, with this in mind, planning and prioritization are going to play a key role. Uh, from here, organizations can, can turn on services uh, as and when they see fit, as and when they're ready to do so. For me, a logical starting point would be addressing secure access via uh, ZTNA uh, and cloud VPN technologies. Devices are already operating beyond the four walls for the vast majority of organizations. So ensuring that they're connecting uh, and accessing resources securely uh, before pushing other services out to the cloud would seem like a really logical place to start. Excellent. And as you've mentioned, James, uh, and I believes Shamita as well. The biggest market trend associated with SASE is the gradual enterprise shift to the cloud, whether they're knowingly or unknowingly doing it. And our surveys show that actually only 4% of organizations have fully migrated to the cloud and just over half have most of their apps and services available in SaaS or software as a service. Do you think we'll ever reach a place where almost all organizations are 100% cloud and embracing SASE? Or do you believe there will always be a need for on-prem infrastructure? And Mark, I'll give that I'll give that question to you. Great, thanks, Graziella. Um, I, I think if you look at the events of last year, uh, you mentioned gradual. I think that's been accelerated. Uh, what the industry thought was going to take years is now morphing into months. It's it's being driven by a variety of locations that applications can be placed, like you said, 
and where users can access them from. Uh, I don't think it is so much as SASE making that push to the cloud for enterprises. Organizations are already making that push to the cloud themselves. SASE is going to be the IT security framework for enterprises that they try to unify uh, their network layer security with WAN automation and management. And they're trying to move that into a single unified cloud platform. And you talk about the need for on-premise. The goal of SASE framework is to make sure all policies, patches, IT is built, don't break, irregardless of the application, where it sits, or where the user is located. So yes, the industry is moving to a cloud-based standard for end-user access. Uh, but when you talk about data, there's always going to be those customers, as James mentioned, in finance and other verticals that we've seen that are demanding some of their data stay on-premise and they can't give up even the slightest control of their most confidential data. So um, I don't see that changing anytime soon. Uh, in, in the five years, uh, will we move to 100% cloud? Uh, I believe the transformation is happening now at a much more rapid pace. Otherwise, Gartner you know, would not have created the category. Remember, everything Gartner does is a response to what they're seeing in the enterprise marketplace. SASE is the response to the changing profile of no longer bringing all traffic uh, on premise and then sending it back out. Building a SASE platform definitely will expedite the adoption of more cloud solutions, whether that be infrastructure as a service or software as a service. Uh, it's gonna be up to customers and their trusted advisors and partners to sort through the multitudes of products even claiming to be sassy, as we heard, uh, no one solution is providing the full sassy stack. But NetMotion, we provide the best in in service uh, solution that can bring together several sassy technologies to help build that framework. So you really brought up a interesting point of view regarding the uh, the always need the need of always having on-prem infrastructure. So I kind of want to go off the cuff a little bit and kind of open it up to the panel and see if anyone else has a different perspective. Yeah, I mean, I certainly think that we'll always have a need for on-prem in certain industries, but I think how we secure and access those services and applications is going to change. Um, I mean, a year ago or five years ago, I think we primary we, we would see some applications only accessed when users were were on the trusted network. And today, um, that perimeter is disappearing. So companies need to think about how they're securing their on-prem services differently. I think uh, this is sort of the, the the beauty of the SASE solutions, right? Because from a end user point of view, they're not really going to care whether where the data is stored, right? They just want to consume it. They want to access it securely, uh, have the best user experience and be productive with it. So what SASE will do is from an end user perspective, it will sort of move it away from a, or where do I need to connect? What do I need to do to access this data? It just makes it so easy for them just to click on an application and not have to worry about the security or where that data resides, it just works, right? So I think that's well, part of what SASE technologies can bring into to customers. Excellent. So I'm going to turn the tables a little bit. As we have all mentioned, zero trust network access or ZTNA is one of the core capabilities to SASE, according to Gardner. And according to our survey, over half of all IT leaders claim to have started their journey to zero trust, implementing at least one zero trust policy. Though our research showed that it's actually being enabled in a limited capacity. So our report then brings up two points of view for this finding. There's the more cynical point of view where our IT leaders just aren't as familiar with zero trust and are hesitant to embrace it. And then there's the more positive point of view where organizations have just started applying zero trust in very limited ways as an entry point to a much longer journey towards SASE. So Jason, I'm going to bring this one to you. What point of view do you think is more accurate in this current landscape? I think it's I think it's a little bit of both, and I also think it's the lack of a tool that can accurately um, apply zero trust across both cloud and on-prem. 
Can I ask to what Shamita said? Um, we use a lot of different tools today to secure on-prem and cloud. Like we may use a CASB to secure cloud resources and use a VPN to secure on-prem resources. So because we have this disparity in the tools that we use to secure those resources, it's very difficult to apply um, zero trust across all of the applications and services that that were um, that our employees are accessing. So I do think um, the kind of there's there's this other debate that's going on right now too. It's they're trying to figure out: Do I need to overhaul all of my existing security and network tools, or is this something that I can augment? And I think that in an ideal state, zero trust is where everyone wants to be, um, but they're trying to figure out the most effective way to do it, most cost effective way to do it, and the easiest way to transition for their employees. Um, and that's where I think our partners can add quite a bit of value in starting to have this conversation with our customers. Like, what does zero trust mean to you? What does SASE mean to you? And helping our customers uh, along that journey. It's not a destination. Yeah, I like that last point of really asking the partners and the end customers what that looks like to them and again customizing it like we mentioned it before. So I'm going to end this discussion with one final question and this is for everybody on the panel. How can that motion help organizations get started on their SASE journey? Well, I, I think Jason hit it on the head when he, he talked about the journey, the destination and uh, net motion provides those tools to give you the visibility into what your end users need to access and and what they are accessing and uh, efficiently move them to that zero trust um, along that zero trust journey with the least amount of disruption to their productivity and that that is you know at the core of net motion at improving end user experience while providing a secure and persistent uh, um, you know access for them to all their resources i would just i would just add to that um i completely agree with 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 mark there but um just to say you know when, when an organization decides to you know to, to evolve and to to make a wholesale change to their their networking and security architecture which is essentially what sassy is about you know, it, 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 a point that's been brought up a couple of times already, you know, the, the, it, it involves changing a lot of technologies and bringing a lot of new technologies in. So for NetMotion to, you know, to help organizations, sure, we've got to tick the boxes uh, where, where we can. But, but being an easy decision for customers to make, I think really helps us to stand out from, from the crowd and from, from the other vendors in this space. You know, if we focus on our strengths as we do around secure access and, and user experience, being highly dependable, you know, we, you can turn that motion on and forget about it. And this is kind of backed up by a 97% customer retention rate and a 91 MPS. And working seamlessly alongside other best of breed technologies, we make implementing that motion a very easy decision for, for customers. They can put us in, forget about it, move on, focus on the next part of that, that sassy journey. Um, you know, it's going to be complicated. There's a lot of vendors and a lot of new technologies to implement and to get their heads around. So by being simple and being a very easy decision to make, um, you know, it, it goes a long way. I would say that this is a good opportunity for our resellers to to ask questions to their customer and really figure out um, what what SASE and zero trust means to them and what applications they have, where they sit. The interesting thing about SAS or ZTNA is the best of breed solution for one customer isn't necessarily the best of breed solution for another customer. Um, so this, I think, provides a really good opportunity for our partner community to, to add a lot of value into their customers as they kind of go through this journey and explore the different possible solutions. You know, at, at NetMotion, we've tried to make a solution that um, that is best of breed for the vast majority of customers. And we're certainly here to help you along that journey. And, and I think um, I think we've covered this quite 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 a few times. But obviously, I think it's pretty clear that the our solution will really help our customers in this journey. Um, and and we have that unique uh, experience enhancement technologies that will help. Uh, but for me, we can also really help our partners differentiate from their competition and build that sort of next generation customer solution stack that will help 
uh, their customers as as well as our customers, obviously, to go on this SASE journey. So, so I think that's pretty key uh, for us. Perfect. I think that's the perfect place to end off. Thanks so much, gentlemen. I really appreciate you all taking the time to be a part in this, and I'm sure the audience has definitely learned a few things today. For those who want to learn more about SASE and want to read our full report, feel free to visit our website at netmotionsoftware.com, and don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn. Thank you for joining.